Welcome in to Rick and Bubba University. This is our, our first podcast of 2020, if you've been following. Of course, if you haven't heard some of the past podcasts, you certainly can go to our podcast channel, our YouTube channel. Uh, just uh, go to the playlist and find Rick and Bubba University and, and go from there. Uh, Bubba, we're going to start the year and dive in here momentarily uh, with another one of our profiles. The, the audience seems to love the profiles. And and um, and so today, this one a little unique. Uh, we'll be interviewing a very unique character. Rick, he is lovingly known as Gary the Bulldozer Man. Gary Vines, who has been a character here on the show for some time. And I know some of you have tuned in to hard-hitting podcasts in the past, like the disaster of the planet, yep. uh, climate change, how's that going to affect us. This is definitely a shift in gears. It is. I, I do want to bring this up, though, before we, we move into talking with Gary, because, I mean, Gary may even be familiar with this product as well. And, Bubba, it is, uh, it is Genesis 950, because we talked about this a few podcasts back. A lot of times you have, like, a stain on the carpet, and it's usually tied to some pet. You know how we're about <laughs> pets in the house. But before you start replacing that carpet because of pet stains and odors, you must try Genesis 950. So so if you want to try it, here's what you do. You add water, and then Genesis 950 breaks down the bonds of stains and odors so that they're gone for good. Its antibacterial component removes the pet stain and the odor from the carpet, and here's what's important, and the padding. That's why that odor goes away. And it can be used in, in a carpet cleaning machine. Uh, it's green, so it's safe for the family, safe for the pets. So if you're tired of pet cleaners that just don't work, it's time to buy Genesis 950. One gallon of industrial strength Genesis 950 can make up to seven gallons of cleaner. A larger ratio, of course, according to the stain, may be required for old stains and odors. But, Bubba, I want you to know this. It's not just for pets. Uh, Genesis 950, you can also clean your entire house. Bathrooms, kitchens, countertops, granite, quartz, garage floors, oil, grease stains, engines, wheels, tools. We're in Gary's world now. Upholstery. Now, before you purchase new carpet, be sure you try Genesis 950. It is available at Amazon.com, but if you order a gallon direct at Genesis950.com, you'll receive a free spray bottle and discount using the code BLAZE. That's Genesis950.com, and the code is BLAZE. So, Gary, um, there's a lot to uncover with you today. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I I don't know if this will be the final title, and I'll talk to Adler about this, but the title, Bubba, that's just been in my mind is the title of this podcast, Who is Gary Vines? Yep. Because Gary Vines is many things. He's he's the bulldozer man, as, as you yep. said. He, yep. He's the spur master. Uh, he's a world-class prankster, which, oh, yeah. we'll, which we'll get into here on the podcast but first i like to do this on profiles and and bubba i think you're with me is get a little history here yep so so tell those that are watching this podcast and listening how did your history with rick and bubba begin well it probably started in uh i don't know what was it 2002 it's a while back i guess it started with me rick it did start (laughs) because i I know my encounter with gary as far as (laughs) Him, us working together was 2007, but I had already met Gary through you, and we're trying to get yeah. that year. Must have been maybe it was several years before that. I don't remember which one. Probably oh, 2002. Exactly. Probably you're probably yeah. I think I think it was. That's that's when I started working. You know, doing land stuff and you know uh, helping folks out with their farms and stuff like that. Now, Bubba, so that was when you had the you know the first. Yeah, time we had a, we had a little piece of property. <clears throat> uh, it was some hunting land uh, south of Birmingham and. Uh, you know, you, you, you need a lot of work done uh, with heavy equipment, whatever. And I was uh, going in. We had a, a road that was common for our little area, and uh, there was uh, some equipment parked on it with a sign on the side. And so I called and uh, got a hold of Gary and asked him, you know, if he could do some work. And we met, and uh, we, uh, you know, almost immediately I realized Gary liked to pull pranks. And uh, you oh, know, yeah. so I had to be fully aware of that. And Gary pulled several. Um, one of my favorite, and this was very early on, I had a, uh, I invited a biologist from our state to come down, look at the property, give me some ideas, tell me what they thought, look everything over. And Gary already had his giant Bigfoot boots on. Here we go. And mm-hmm. he went running through a mud hole, taking giant leaps. And it was a big <laughs> mud area right by the gate where you went into the property. But it wasn't real deep, but it was muddy. Gary goes running through there taking giant leaps in these boots he's made. Now, Rick, these boots, 
they're, he, they're, they look real. He's took a boot. He's reversed out a footprint so that it, he could put a bottom on it that would leave the impression he wanted it to leave. He put claws in it, and he put hair around the edge of it, so you would see that. So the state biologist gets there, and we're talking, and he's looking around, and he sees these giant prints in the mud hole. And he says, what is that? And he goes over, and I said, that's my bulldozer guy. He likes to play practical jokes. He went running through here a little while ago with his Bigfoot boots on. Now, first off, he looks at me like there's a guy with Bigfoot boots out here running around. Who builds Bigfoot boots? Well, he kept looking at it, and we were talking about some other things and dirt, composition, and crops, and, you know, all this kind of stuff you talk about with a biologist. He just kept looking back at this mud hole. Right. He said, do you mind if I take pictures of that? I said, and again, I tried to be clear. I said, you know that was just made before you got here. I saw him do it. He goes, I know, I know, but I want to take pictures of it. So he was so impressed with it. And Rick, he's down there. I don't mean he's taking one trip. He's down on one knee focusing, getting the angle and everything. And I'm I'm laughing inside going, this is is gold. This is gold. Gary, who does that? I did. Right. So you, 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 in your mind, you said, I'd love to be able to make fake. Big oh yeah! Print. Oh yeah! I spent I spent two or three days on them. Rick, you, you don't understand those boots. What he had to go out and make <clears throat> prints, and then he had to put a mold yeah, a and reverse it and put that on the sole of the sheet of the boots he was wearing, and the hair shows up around the edge. The toe print, you know, you see claws in it. It's it's one of the best fake Bigfoot oh, I have yeah. ever oh, seen. Yeah. I mean, you look at it and you know Gary did it, and you go, "Wow, that looks real." All right, so Gary. Say I I know you. Say I'm a person who knows you. It could be your wife. If they walked into your shop and said, "Hey, what are you working on?" There was a time period when you said, "Hey, I'm working on my Bigfoot boots." Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I you know I keep them in my shop. Still you know. got them? Oh yeah, yeah. I Rick, he could them. go running in them today if he wanted to. Oh, I yeah. guarantee you. And look, I got plenty of the early days. Okay, the, and this is one of my favorite ones. We're out fishing on the little lake that was adjoining the property. And there is uh, it, it's a pretty steep hill on both sides, and it goes up, and there's another guy's property, and then it even goes over one more ridge. And there was a very nice family out there having a picnic, okay? I, they're on the ground. They had like a <laughs> – Gary. They, they, I mean, they've unpacked all kind of stuff out there. They got a grill. They got a thing on the ground. I saw them. I was on a hill coming into the fishing place. And the Lenore brothers were over there fishing with me, which we don't get to do a lot. So it was fun to get to fish with them. So we're down there fishing. We're talking, having fun. Well, here comes Gary rolling in. He stops, and I said, what are you doing, Gary? He said, I'm going to check a piece of equipment I got over here on the hill. It's okay. And and I said, Gary, do you have that that Bigfoot thing that you do with you, which was – Greg calls it a dumb bull. I don't know oh, technically yeah. what now, the name is. Now, this is not the boots. Oh, yeah. This I, is the I, sound. You know, yeah, this I, is the I've sound that, yeah. of it. So it's a giant coffee can with a string on it, and Gary gets a little rosin, a little yeah. sticky off of a oh, pine yeah. tree, pulls it, and it makes the awfulest. Terrible. If Bigfoot exists right. and he has a sound, this is the sound he makes. And just for fun, because the Lenore brothers had not heard it at the time, I said, Gary, when you go over there to your bulldozer So you to check prompted it, this I one. did. I said, go you over there. It. <laughs> I oh, said, yeah. when you get on top of that hill, because I'd heard Gary do it many times. But I'd never heard him do it way off in the distance. I didn't know how loud it would be. I said, when you get over there on the hill, get that dumb bull out. Give us the Bigfoot call. Let us see if we can hear it down here. I doubt we can hear it, but we'll try. Okay, that's fine. So he goes on. Can I land here for one minute? This is all you need to know about Gary. Hey, Gary, do you have your dumb bull with you in a truck? Yes, I do. Sure he does. I I always have it. So. So then we go to fishing again. We talk a little bit. We got it was a quiet moment. There's no wind blow. It's just a beautiful day. Had you out forgotten there. about it? All, I really did. I forgot about it. You hear the plop of the cast going in the water. Is all you hear. Then on a mountain, in the distance, <laughs> it sounded. It was. <laughs> and and we all look at each other and we start to laugh and. Got, <laughs> And, and, you know, Tommy says, I, I know who's doing it, and I'm still scared. I want to oh, leave yeah. right now. Well, about then, we hear somebody, that nice couple that was having a picnic, I hear them go, did you hear that? No, they didn't. Come here. <laughs> no, come here. Didn't. About then, Gary, Tom, right on time. <laughs> and it just drags out. 
Rick, they were very disturbed by that. They said a few things. You could hear them very plainly. They started packing their stuff up and left in a hurry. Gary. And and we can't tell them what it – I mean, they're too far away for yeah, us to holler, yeah. but they're hearing what yeah. we're hearing. Oh, yeah. And we got to laughing so hard, I could not – I couldn't even hold a fishing pole. Oh, yeah. It was – you know, if you're going to do something, I've always said, if you're going to do something, do it right. So, so, so you live for it's this. It's awful. But, I mean, you can pull that string just, you know – Slow, the, the real slow, and it 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 sounds like something breathing. I mean, it, uh, you know, and it, it's it's awful. I know. I I've even seen Gary. Yeah, Gary. I've heard it. And I want to. And I want to get it. my pistol out and leave. You know what no, I mean? I, I've I, heard it. So oh, yeah. it's terrible. It we, makes an awful sound. It just it, the skin on the back of your neck piles up. And we'll go through some of your greatest pranks today on Rick and Bubba University. Can but, I tell you one more? Yeah, sure. I've, I've got a long list. Want, I'm, I've tried to, I've tried wanna, to cut I, it down to three. When you finish this, I, and we'll get to others, I want to go back to where this came from. <laughs> when did you? When did this start? When did this become your thing? But anyway, go ahead, uh, one more. So, so we're out bow hunting. I have a friend over, and we had to walk. You know, I know this sounds strange for me, but we park and we walk probably a mile or plus, and we're bow hunting up here. Hunt's over, we come down, we're coming out, and Gary is very good at doing uh, an owl call, oh, yeah. okay? And many nights when I'm walking out, Gary, of course, will jump out to scare you. He will, he'll do the owl call right over your head, oh, yeah. all this stuff. So, and I I'm, had one and just I, happen. And we hear an owl, and, you know, the guy was like, hey, did you hear that owl? I said, it's probably, it's probably my bulldozer guy. It's probably Gary. Because he does this all the time. <laughs> oh, if he knows and, you're and, hunting, he's going to be and waiting then, on you. And then we out. hear it again. We hear it again. And I'm t- I am said, yeah, he does this all the time. He jumped out last week. I thought I was almost, uh, you know, I almost shot him, you know. And about then, the last thing you hear is one flap of the wings. To, to, and you feel the wind. And the guy looked at me. He said, I think your bulldozer driver almost took my hat. <laughs> you know. So we're always on edge yeah, around Gary anyway. looking for him anyway. So yeah. Oh, yeah. Where, where did this love of pranks begin well it, it started probably back when i was just real young you know i was born naked <laughs> uh, but you know after that you right. know yeah. my daddy said i was sitting up in the bed looking around you know when i was eight years old but <laughs> it started because you know my uh he's got his eyes you know, together my right? mother you yeah. know she could she could hardly get anybody to keep us when we was kids because uh, i was uh, always uh, you know, so you, you really them. have been doing this oh, as yeah. a child. It's, it's you know, it's a childish thing. What do you remember? What your first prank was, or what was one of your favorite ones as a kid? Uh, I don't know. They've been so many. They've been so many <laughs> over the years that you know. But it 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 you know, when the babysitter wakes up and taking a nap, and me standing over with a butcher knife, you know, and I ain't but six years old. That, that's not you funny. know they you know. They said, I'm not keeping him more. Because the pranks <laughs> yeah. would go too far. Oh, so yeah, it pranks, too far. And we remember the most famous one here, and we'll get to it today. Oh, yeah. But I remember this comment, and I think it applies to you, and it really applies to everybody. And I can't remember what author made this point. And he said, when you when you look at different individuals, and he was talking about different writers, okay? Oh, yeah. He said, let's say the scene is a open field with a pond in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. If you bring in Louis L'Amour, Louis L'Amour immediately sees cowboys, he sees a campfire, right. he sees cattle grazing, he, he, he thinks about cattle rustlers, yeah. and he starts working from there. He says right. Stephen King sees the same picture. Oh, yeah. He pictures a monster coming up out of the water and killing everybody and dragging them down the bank. Mm-hmm. So for mo- you literally see a prank opportunity everywhere you look. Oh yeah, I mean it's always on your mind. Oh yeah, you 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 know, I've done it so long. You know, it, it don't take a whole lot for me to you know figure something out and you know so wherever you, are you I'm saying at. it comes natural. When you oh, see something, natural. you'll think I tell you what I could, I tell you what I could build that into something <laughs> being good. Prime. You know that just like it was you know what two weeks ago. Are we gonna talk about that? So you want oh, to listen. Rick, he pranked your mom. He pranked your mom. Everybody he wants, keeps watching the video of it. Everybody wants to hear what I did to you. You know, I got so many comments when I posted on Facebook yeah. that I scared you. Yeah. Everybody wants to hear it, but uh, Speed and all wants to save it 
maybe for a bit on the show. Well, but, we'll talk about it on the show. The podcast but, is, you know, it's it's uh, you get a anything, more in depth uh, look at it. But here's what happened, and it just happened in the last few weeks. Oh yeah, you want me to set it up a little bit? Yeah, go ahead and set it All up. All right. Rick went hunting. He texted me, told me he was hunting, and uh, you know, I said, "Well, I'm not going to go over there right now." But you know, I I seen the opportunity that see what I'm talking about. Happen. This is back to the pond. Yeah, and yeah. how people see it. So, Let me, I, can I clarify this? Oh, and yeah. Bubba's going to be proud that I actually do this now. Oh yeah, it was really a request from my wife, and Bubba likes it too. If you're ever going to hunt by yourself, it's it's wise to let somebody know you're hunting and where you are. Yeah, well, oh, absolutely. I, I, yeah. I do every time. Yeah, so like uh, you have a flight plan. If you're flying a plane, yeah. you should have a hunt because, plan. And then if you're late, somebody knows to go look for. Because Sherry said, "Look, I don't think you should go hunting by yourself anymore." And I say, "Well, even when I'm by myself, I let Gary know that I'm there." Oh yeah. Now I'm, I regret that now. Yeah. But that was my line of thinking. Well, you know, I'll take care of you. I'm not. Oh gonna, yeah. You know. Are we going to ask Gary the question we've always wondered about him today? We've never asked him. Hold it. I think we should. That's no, what I'm today's not, about. The question not, is, who is Gary Vines? Well, I've got what? a question, and I know you wanted to answer yeah. like I do. All right, so go ahead. Finish what you did. All right. Well, I went over there late. You know, it was about 30 minutes before dark, and uh, I was going to wait to see if he saw anything, needed any help, and I was standing around the barn. And uh, it started to get dark, darker, and, you know, at 5 o'clock, you know, it's pretty dark. You know, a couple of weeks ago, it was pretty dark. Yeah, central so time. I waited, you know, to 5.30, and I, there was no rig. But you forgot to turn the lights on in the barn. So I knew not, you know, I had it planned. I knew not to turn the light on because you left them off. And then you know I was there. So, you know, the fog was settling around the pond. Oh, I'm very familiar with it. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was pretty dark. I mean, pitch black, you mm-hmm. know. It was. And uh, I saw your lights coming. I said, well. Couldn't stand I said, it. Could I you? couldn't stand it. I just had he to knows he has a situation just, he can take I, advantage. I mean, of. I, I got to, yeah, I got to take advantage of what's what's given to me, right? You know. Yeah. So I stepped inside the barn, you know, where you pull in at, and uh, I saw his lights coming. He crossed the barn, crossed you know the edge of the pond, and pulled around. And when he come through there, all he had was the lights of the cart. See it. Picture he, everything pitch black and I was, except your headlights. I was two foot from him, and I just reached out, and I said, Who? And he screamed. I mean, ear-piercing scream. Did you record it? No, I couldn't record it because, you know, the uh, you know the light on your, your phone. Would you, give you away? video would give me away. So, you know, he screamed so, so loud. And shot the gas to that cart, like to run through the other end of the barn. And it, you know, I I thought it would scare him a little bit, but it it, it scared you pretty good, didn't it? Well, I want to think about driving into a dark barn, thinking you're the only person in 380 something acres, and somebody standing two feet in there and grabs you and and, and hollers. <laughs> now. The the part that's of course there's you know a rifle's hard to get up that quick the pistol <laughs> is easier, but it was one of those things where your body it, it doesn't know what to do right. and, and noises just you come, didn't buckle did you shut down no well, noises just flew out and then it's like the noise when it got out it had to be pushed to its final place <laughs> ah! and then oh, yeah. finish you know what I mean you couldn't I couldn't even when I saw him I had to finish letting it out. Oh yeah, and uh, and 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 I, my first reaction was just flight to just go after yeah. whatever it was. Well, and yeah, then, I mean it was serious though. I mean it was yeah. real serious. But does that give you joy? Yes, it does really. What so did I, you what did you run attack? the other way or did you well, I'd run call back? Them. Or? No, I, it happened so fast. Honestly, yeah. yeah th- when people say yeah. things happen fast, I know what they mean. I got you. I oh, come yeah. in. You, you can't even think. My mind is thinking about you know what, what dinner. What, I got dinner. I got to lock everything up. And and then he when he's hollering at me, it happened so fast. Really, I just I just went forward in the car a minute, then stopped, and then you start begging. It's almost your, your body takes over, and you start going compute, compute, compute. What's going on? What's yep. going on? Identify it, figure it out, and shut it down. <laughs> and uh, but I it mean, was so funny though. Well, I, I know, mean, it, I know. It was so funny. Yeah, I, I got it. But it, I mean, Gary, some of that's dangerous. What, what if I'd have had the pistol because I knew it was dark and I wanted to get it up and just say, hey, you know what? I need to be sure there's not an animal or something in here waiting on me or somebody. I mean, what if I'd have done? I mean, I'd have been awful. 
Well, what, what it's I, been bad for me, but right. Rick, he used to do the same thing to me walking out. He'd be uh, in a trail and oh, get in a bush, and but you walk right by him, and he'd reach out and try to touch you. Mm-hmm. And you got you know you got equipment and all that. Oh. I said, Gary, you're gonna get shot. Is, is there a thrill seeking part of it too? Do I you? reckon so. You yeah. know, I I don't really, you know, I I I really don't think it out sometimes. Right, but you know. Well, well, here's what I got to go. <laughs> Everything's worked out so far, so good. Well, you know? we'll we'll get into some of that, and Bub, after Bubba's question, but I want to ask you this because I think this is important, and Bub. If you want to be judge, you can be. <laughs> I pranked Gary about my dad yeah. at the lake. That story mm-hmm. got on there about making Gary think that he had hurt dad. I mean, right. and put him in the hospital. Okay, and and Gary is trying to make a play that this makes us even. Right. This is payback for that. Oh no, no. I yeah. I expect you know I'm not in okay. the in the you treaty. Want, you, I'm uh, not in the treaty. You're not. So you, you want know, retaliation and it won't be. But yeah. And I don't care for getting pranked. I mean that that's good. Did you like that when I pulled on you though? Oh yeah. It was pretty. Good. I mean you had. Oh yeah. You're the kind of guy that said, "Look, that's not my song, but I acknowledge that's a great song." Oh yeah. I was, cool. I was expecting your mama to call me any minute. You know, just where you at? Cause you know I got her. You realize, like Bubba said, my mother is seventy-eight years old. <laughs> you could have killed her, Gary. And when she was seventy-seven, <laughs> Gary scared my mom by tying a weasel-looking thing, like a rat, squirrel. Thing. Actually, it was a it was a mink okay. that come off of a mink stole. Okay. Coat. And he tied a fishing line yeah. to it to connect it to the cabinet, and then told my mother to open the cabinet, who's terrified of rodents. And this thing came out on her, and she screamed like I, I guess I did. <laughs> what did y'all not laugh? We did laugh, but I mean, you could have killed a, a, a senior citizen. I mean, that that's. Well, I mean, I've it, I've learned because Gary has got me on that so many times over at Al's, who was his favorite. Yeah. Um, when Gary says, "Hey, uh, you know, for whatever he's doing, hey, hand me one of the. It's in the cabinet oh, right there." I go, "No." I'm not getting. It. You don't get I'm anything getting out of his cooler. I'm not pulling, yeah. opening, twisting, looking, stepping on anything you need me to do. You've got us so <laughs> spooked, and now you've done this, it makes it worse. Do you remember the other day, to Bubba's point, you really needed a tool out of the toolbox? Oh yeah, we Rick wouldn't get it out. Uh-uh. Oh, you think I'm open about toolbox? Well, no, it could be booby trap. I will say this, Gary. Uh, we had a lot of fun one day when he gave me my first lesson on driving a bulldozer. How'd that go? Oh yeah. Well, and uh, we were making a field, so we were scraping the top of it off. And that's the first time I'd ever driven a bulldozer, and it's boy, it's rough. I mean, really, I thought some tractors could be a little rough. Man, that is rough. But Gary did a good job training me on it, and we had a little fun doing that. So we, you know, we we have some good times too. So what was <laughs> what was the question that you wanted to ask? Gary? Well, for many for many years, Gary, I would you know I had a little piece of property I wanted to go and escape to and just get out there mm-hmm. and nature. That's when I was you know a little bit younger and better shape, so everybody sure. wasn't worried about if I was going to drop dead yeah. while I was out there. Yeah. So uh, you know I would get out, and the minute I got there, Gary would show up. Oh, this is this is a good. He question. would show up. Yeah, and I'm thinking. I know I didn't drive by him on the way. How does he always know when I'm here? It's a great question. And it and it even turned into Gary would never call me, but I may be going down the interstate, and if I pulled off at that exit, yes. maybe to get gas, grab a bite to eat, my phone would ring. Say, hey, what you doing? You at the farm? And I go, how does he know I'm at the farm? To the point, I even looked for a tracker up under my truck one time. I said, Gary has slipped a tracker in here on me. It's almost like you had a sixth sense, and Rick has told me you're that way too. Gary, how? How it, do you it, know it, when un- we're that close? It's uncanny. Because you don't call any other time. It's uncanny. If I get anywhere near that exit, it's the same exit Bubba's talking about. Are you sitting over there watching all the time? What do you no, have people? Do you have like lookouts? You got peeps, like, don't you? They like, call them. Like forts used to do. They have lookouts. Here yeah. they come. Because well, I, I really, I really can't explain it. You, you just know, know. I just know. I mean, I don't know where it's just an instinct or. I, if or my what. if my tires touch that exit, you lived it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I will get a text, and it usually does this to play. We've had this discussion among ourselves, Gary. That how does Gary know when we're there? Because you will hear nothing. I exit that interstate. Hey, what you doing? And I'm like, well, how does he know that? It's almost like a, and he'll play games with you. His text to me will usually be this. You go on the farm day? Just to mess with me. You know, like, yeah. wait, mm. how, I'm here. <laughs> I just got here. I know. I just, I just got So how, how, do you how, know? how do you know? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Here I just, come clean. This is the podcast. I'll, is is that is that your secret question you wanted to ask? Yeah, that's it. Well, yeah, I cannot reveal 
You got no, somebody that dips ice cream lookouts. over there somewhere that calls He's you. He's got lookouts. I think he takes a picture of our vehicle and gives yeah. it to his yeah. lookouts, and they text him when we Well, you know, by. you know, when I took care of your farm, you know, I, I really took care of it. And I do the same thing for you or anybody else. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do. So let, let's go back a little bit and, and ask, and I, I got this out of email. One of the things people wanted us to ask you, yeah. Tell us about other jobs you had. How did you get into what you do? But what are some other things you've done for a living throughout your life? Well, when uh, I guess after I got married, uh, you talking about you and Gwen? Yeah, mm-hmm. my first first marriage. Mm-hmm. But uh, but anyway, I got uh, I worked at a foundry for ten years. Mm-hmm. You know, we worked for a square day company. And, you know, made the fittings for power company and electrical companies. But I stayed in that 10 years, and then I went into the body shop business in 1985. You still keep – you like getting classic cars and fixing them up oh, to this yeah, day, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I got a 30, so, 34 Chevrolet truck now. Is, it Was that your own business, your business? You ran yeah, it, your shop? Yeah, yeah, it was my shop. And you did body work and painting and that kind of yeah. stuff? Yeah, I fixed wrecked cars and – Painting, Gary can do whatever. anything. So what, what got you out of and that And it's country strong. Too. Well, yeah, you know, I stayed in that probably from 85 to about 2000. I started buying up, you know, backhoes and uh, bulldozers and dump trucks, whatever, you know. But And I really got a few jobs going on that, and that's when I decided that, you know, I still got my property down at the interstate. And I decided that, you know, well, I could lease this out and do what I really wanted to do. So that because was your real I, passion? I really love, you know, working on people's property. and. Where, where did you get a passion for that? Who ta- where did you learn? How did you well, learn Well, I've always, that? you know, over the years that I started hunting, you know, I'd always do my own green fields, you know, road work. I've always had a, you know, pretty good-sized tractor. And then I got into wanting to clear property and stuff, you know, and do things for other folks and you know when you do that you gotta you know you gotta up your game and you know buy the equipment that is capable of doing what you want to do big investment yeah oh yeah that's big that, toys big toys, oh, yeah, big toys. You, you know you can't hide money though bro. i mean you can't even have a no nah, you can't have that can't even have a backhoe so nah. how, how much equipment do you have now well i've uh let's see i've got one dozier we're talking I about sold, what you actually tell the IRS. Right. I well, got one dozier. I got one dozier left. One dozier left. And Does it bother uh, you when Rick... The new tractor you bought me, I got it. Yeah, I, right. got a, I wish you quit telling uh, people that. People think you, that's real. Do you, <laughs> do you like when Rick does his impression of you? Well, what... Uh, yeah, it, it's okay. I mean, it's... Uh, <laughs> it's you know, a, when it, you're it, driving it, down it the really road... It really don't make... It don't make me mad, I, I, you know... I do have a lot of people that says, "Hey, Rick's got you down pat." He <laughs> said, "You don't even need to be on the radio anymore." <laughs> when you're driving down the road in the morning, going, you know, probably just finished breakfast at the Hickory Chip or something, sure. and you're headed to a job, and you hear Rick on the air talking like he, what do you, what do you think? I just smile, you know. <laughs> I, I, I guess, you know. So do we. <laughs> but, uh, and you know, I didn't know he did that a lot, you know, off the show, but. You oh, know, yeah. Speedy and Ham said, well, he talked like you all the time. I can't help you. You know, hey, oh, I can't yeah. have that. I mean, you can't even. But if it makes you feel better, he does it to a lot of people. Yeah. I know. It's one of my things, like you're pranking, I can't help it. I know. I, he, he likes well, see, the minor you, You're in the same boat I'm in. You know, you, just We're different. in the same boat. Yeah. 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 Well, 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 let's talk. So who taught you, though, how to run it's this It's kind of like me with ice cream. It is. Did well, you just learn it on the Mostly on the uh, self-taught. So all about self-taught. Which, yeah. I mean, there's a, there's an art to it. It's it's a gift. Oh yeah, you need to know There's pretty much what Gary, you're doing. You know, Gary's taught me a lot of things. You know that uh, usually dads pass down to their sons. You know, like how to blow up a two liter bottle. You know, stuff Absolutely. like that. Oh yeah, I've done a lot of that. Yeah, he told me. He told me. He said, "Now look, if you're gonna scare somebody, <laughs> you, you stand right here. Don't get over here. You be, you be you need to be in their blind spot." <laughs> oh yeah. So let, let's uh, let, let's talk a little bit about. If he ever asks you for aluminum foil, stand by. I know it. So you you mm. started working for Bubba, we think in early two thousands, and then I was introduced to you by Bubba, who which I'm thankful for because you're like, look, if I ended up buying a little place near where Bubba was, and we were kind of 
sharing you for a time when Bubba still had land there, and that was in 2007. And then Al came along. And then <laughs> here comes Al Rhea. Yeah. <laughs> Thought I had you to myself. Bubba got him a place somewhere else, kind of out of your range. Well, see, I started working for Al about the time I started working for Bubba. He always says you that. Know. Yep, yep. Uh, you know what he's trying to say? Well, Al Rick, was first because he know, and Bubba were around the same time. Al's a good guy. That's, he's a great guy. He is a great he's, guy. Uh, you know, he's you know he's he's a little deeper pockets than we are. So uh, you know, Gary kind of you know he went to where the water was. I mean, hey, Al Rio, he takes care of me at Christmas. Well, and, and, the, and the thing about it, I I, I realize, I, I realize. I, I well, re- I I appreciate your little you know little extra just last month too. You know. Well, I'm just trying to keep up. Wow, Rick, it's nice to you bought mm-hmm. him a tractor. All right, guys, look, I know what you're doing. You're doing these stories about me buying you a tractor and a truck. So Al will believe it, and he'll start trying to match it. I don't have the money to buy you a tractor or a truck. Rick Mahindra has great financing. Right, right. sure. Yeah, you know we put that on we put that on Instagram about the tractor. I know, and uh, I was getting which messages. is another that, joke. He said, "Man, it's another prank." Man, that Rick is a great guy, ain't he? Till my wife saw it. Yeah, <laughs> she said, "Did you buy? Rick? She walked Did you in. buy Gary a tractor? Did she she walked, in, she walked in holding that phone. She goes." Have you bought Gary a tractor? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, I didn't buy Gary a tractor. Well, it, you know, it's the thought of it. I would like to, but yeah. I just I ain't got that. I ain't got the kind of money you and Al got. Well, I ain't got much Bubba money. Bubba and I, we're small. Do you, get, do you ever get tired of Gary saying, Al said? Oh, good. I got. If I call like him knowing we're coming down, I now have a gift, and I go three, two. Yeah. I'll say, I say, hey, Gary, I'm over here at the farm, uh, just FYI. Well, when I finish up over here at Al's, I mean, there it is. In, in any know, conversation, he would, he would Al. always say, well, Al said, you know, give him hey, his. I'll he, tell you he what really Al says Al it only more than you know. Okay. You know? Hey. You know? You know? Yeah. You know, well, you know another, this is your Bubba perfect example. <laughs> well, I mean, if you need some feeders, Al, and there it is, then whatever. Yeah. He gets him. You know, Al, fill him, in the blank. Al gets him 1,000 pounders. You know, well, yeah, well, Al's got folding money. <laughs> Hey, we wouldn't have to fill them up so much if you'd buy some like Al's. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and Gary, what Lordy, is your Lordy, love? Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. What is your love with Tecamani grass? Yeah, we we I had, like I experimenting with grass. No, you I had used, used to used to tell. I mean, you would work Tecamani into hey, any grass no, situation. Uh, hey, you got to try some Tecamani. I, had, I hadn't <laughs> used Tecamani probably tecamani. in you know back when oh, I wonder, planted for you. Yeah, you, you had a falling out with Tecamani? No, they just changed their. Uh, mm. You know, they just changed some of the stuff in the seed, and, you know, I went with Uh-oh. another, another company. Brand. Mm. Right, so now you don't have to worry about no holds barred, okay, on on products or anything like that. There's people that are watching this podcast or listening to it, and they really want to know if you had the total decision on their place, what do you plant? and, and For deer. For, for deer, and what do you go with when it comes to uh-huh. supplemental feeding on – What's, what's your suggestion on turkeys, deer, and supplementing supplemental feeding and feed? Well, with all the stuff that I buy from this company, you know, I should get a discount. No doubt. But there's a company in, uh, I forgot what part of, you know, kind of southwest Alabama that sells a product called WMS. Oh, boy. He loves it. And, you know, I like it because it's variety of, you know, it's got like five clovers in it, triticale, and you know, it's got everything for the deer and turkey. To get any tecamani in it, I don't even know what you know. Yeah. Gary, you you like to, the you, you like to talk about tecamani. I like a variety all out the there. time, and he's acting like he don't care anymore mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, right. Well, it, there's there's some there's, yeah, there's a story there we're not privy right. to. Yeah. Al, I got Al Rhea right. didn't like it. Or something. Al said get rid of it. Yeah. But you know <laughs> and, and that I, that's that's what's found out for for the the you know the soil that we got mm-hmm. where I plant, which is important, has worked up has worked out better. Than, you you need to do a soil analysis. You need oh, to know yeah. what kind of soil you. Yeah, have. you know if you lime, you know, and do what you know, send your soil samples off and. Yeah. What you know, about what about for turkey? Oh yeah, it's good for turkeys. Same thing. Yeah, that same WMS. Oh yeah, and when, and in the feeders, I've noticed that you said, which I at first I was like, well, it takes them longer to get. The well, going. the thing about it, if, if you it, got a fifty pound feeder or a hundred pound feeder or a three hundred pound feeder, you you've got to you know, with the population of deer that you've got, mm-hmm. you know, if that fifty pound feeder 
is getting emptied every day, mm-hmm. you probably need to jump up to a, a 300 pound. Feeder. You need a bigger feeder. Yeah. Because it's just, it's just too much work. But, and plus, you're going in there a lot making noise and all that. Yeah. And you're going back and forth, you know. And, yeah. you know, I, if, if I'm doing a property like yours, mm-hmm. and, you, and you know this, mm-hmm. I don't go in there unless I've got something I've got to do. Right. You're very big because, on Because, you know, pressure. And Stay out I, of there. you know, I get on to you a lot. Here we go. And the kids about riding four wheelers. I know you do. Yeah, you know oh, I don't. Profit. I can tell you right now, I don't like that. I, uh, you made that very clear. well. You run them oh, off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mo bucks won't stay around where there's a lot of silliness going. Of course, on. part of the reason why we bought the land so oh, we yeah. can ride four wheelers. Oh yeah. But but anyway, so and then inside the feeder, you like a protein corn mix. You don't like just corn. Well, in in uh, probably in the in the colder part in the colder months, I would probably mix. You know, maybe half and half protein, half corn. But in the summertime, they need more of the protein than the corn. You know, in my, you know, I'm not a biologist. I know, but, but I mean, but I, I run it like I, I think it should be run. Well, you're clear on that. Yeah. So you treat it like it's your own, which I like, except when things like people call and I say they can have something and you won't let them have it. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. You, you, what do you say? <laughs> I, you, I mean, you just too nice. Yeah, you just too dead gum nice. Uh, well, Gary, speaking of that, and we're getting close to the end, we, we have to discuss your newfound celebrity. Nah, and, we ain't got to study. I mean, you, you, I think Bubba, we're going to have to have part two. Yeah, Bubba, you, tell him. I mean, he, he's become a huge celebrity. Oh, yeah. On the show. Yeah, well, I know he hey, is. I know a lot of the waitresses down there in the well, let me the world let, talk let, about it. You know, you know big, the, hey, you the, know what, Rick? He's a big tipper. Yes, he is. So, and I know you like to leave yeah, a nice I, tip. I don't and, know about that now. Why you want you want you're not a big tipper? Well, I mean, I tip what's what's you know if they're good, you know. Yeah, I you're will, a big but, tipper, but what, you don't you don't have to be right. shy about it. What has it been like in your hometown? Because I know you like to live kind oh, of a it's, private it's life. Oh, not nothing's changed really. It's not what I'm hearing. You know, I hear you know I have a few people that have recognized me or something, but you know I you know that stuff. You know, I, I that stuff don't mean a whole lot to me. Are you still active in a lot of parades? <laughs> Well, I've I've quit pretoning. You know, I don't do no pretoning anymore. No what? Baton. Yeah, I knew what you meant. What about the turkey call? You yeah. you you invented the world's greatest turkey call, the Spurmaster. Yeah. What makes it great? Well, it sounds like a turkey. <laughs> well, Bubba, there it is. I Look, mean, Gary well, Gary hunts turkey a lot. Yeah. He loves that. Yeah. And he. He you made know, the I, call I that he wanted that that was I guess everything else was lacking a little bit. The well, response I, has been, a, you know, I killed a state record with it. Yeah, you you, but, you still hold it now, or did somebody? Well, beat I that think up? somebody maybe a, maybe killed one that had one spur that was two inches or something. But I I don't know. I hadn't checked the record books yet. But, but you were in the record book, state for record a while. Yeah, yeah. And and you developed to Bubba's point for yourself. And every and it started being so successful. You decided, hey, I'll make them available. Well, see, and I they were I handmade did, in yeah. the USA. I really didn't. And Gary shop. <laughs> I, I really didn't want to sell one, you know, in my in my county. Actually, you know, I, I really debated about selling them because they're effective. Yeah, you don't want oh, people yeah. taking. You want the turkeys to be all yours. Oh yeah, I've killed a lot of I've killed a lot of turkeys, but. Uh, and if I don't kill another one, you know, I'd be satisfied. So people make a mistake. Yeah, I like to sit up in the afternoon and just watch them walk by. Well, you can't go. You know, I tried to take you last year, like taking 300 pounds eight year old. Gary, I don't, I don't like to call them up. I like to hide and wait for them to walk by. Well, that ain't turkey hunt. <laughs> so, you know, you, you, about like, you about like other turkey hunters, you know. Uh, but really, it, it's just. I took a, a pot and pan call to me. It's the sport of turkey hunting. No, I got you. It's what's. <laughs> And I do it for the sport part of it. I don't do it for the ambush or, you know, just say I kill one. If I can't call that turkey up, I don't mm-hmm. care nothing about shooting. Well, Gary, you, you have a state record. You know, I how, mean, and that's something none of us will probably ever have in anything. How do they get your turkey call if they want to look at it? You, you want to sell any more of them or no? Well, I don't really care whether I sell one or not. But okay. It's a great you know, marketing plan. I've got a, uh, you know, I've got a website. You can type in my name, Gary Vines, and you have to go through all the Rick and Bubba junk on there. Yeah. But you can get to my website from that. But You know what he's doing? He's doing a bold jangles chicken sandwich. No, it is. He is. It's, it's, what are you I, got a, I got a great call, but can't nobody have it. We, we can't even keep them. So, oh, Gary, yeah. the, 
your call is very well made. I'll tell you that. It's and I don't know turkey calls, but it's the well, ones I, I've I seen. Can... It's very well. Just from an engineering standpoint, holding one, you can tell it's very well made. Works good. Even I can use it. Okay, which that tells you my level of expertise. Yeah. But I, I'm really shocked that one of these big companies have not bought you out yet. Have well, you had a chance to? Do, have people offered you question. to do that? Yeah, I've had. Uh, I've had a couple people, but you know, I. When you do that, you go into mass production, you know, using CNC machines that cuts everything out. And I just think the quality of it will probably go down. But I'm not sure, but, you know, but I But I he just, don't want to turn it loose. He don't want to give it to you. No. Uh, it's, it's, I, I'm shocked Moultrie hadn't pulled up and got his big old checkbook out and tried to, tried to buy that. Well, you know, Moultrie, they won the, the state tournament last year. With your with call. My call. Yep. Sure did. Probably shouldn't have said that. But it, sure did. Governor's well, one shot. Yep. Yep. Governor's so, one. so in closing, we got about we got about three to five minutes. The prank that you pulled <clears throat> that became one of the most famous stories on the show on Scott Dawson mm-hmm. and Mark Garnett. Yeah. Down at at, uh, at our farm. He's the one at Piston Bridges. Yeah, that's that's the one, Gary. Yeah, yep, yeah there I it still is. don't think you'd say yeah, that on a podcast. Yeah, well, maybe on a, a podcast, but well, yeah. we'd prefer yeah. you not. You're right? We'll put yeah, it that way. that's right. It's but we'll get it in post. Right? <laughs> will, will you ever forget that? No, well, I just I just wished you know it was daylight. I just wished that I would have had a a camera there. How did y'all not record? That? It's really stupid on our part. If we if there was a breakdown with Gary and me on communication, yeah, your phone my, went my phone went out, which made me really experience it. And what happened was we took uh, Scott Dawson and Mark Garnett. You've heard them both on the show. If you're familiar with the show, if not, they're friends of ours. One of them is an evangelist, so somehow that makes us a little more heinous. And um, Gary was pretending to be a rival landowner that thought that my land that I just purchased, actually I'd pulled some of his in with a new survey. Mm-hmm. And I had told them that we don't need to do anything that's going to cause any trouble. If Especially guy, on that side. If the guy comes out, let's just say, I'm sorry, we're still working this out. I even said, and I'm not proud of this, to make the prank work, let's be a good example of Christ. And 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 that, you know, that that's – Dawson said for him and Garnett, they said that's the time they said, oh, okay, he's not fooling around. Right. Now, I probably shouldn't have done that, but right. but, it, but it sure did it make – Well, see, I didn't, even know, I didn't even know you had even told them that. Yeah. And Gary put on his fake wig and his teeth and took a 12-gauge, was it? Yeah, it's a 12-gauge. And um, and I didn't know you were going to use live rounds. I wish I had known that. Well, I mean, yeah, right. Why have you? Going so you you came out and yeah. fired some rounds off, yeah. and uh, two of them went running pretty hard. I thought we were all going to laugh about it. Hey, it's just a joke. But you couldn't catch them. But to I tell them couldn't no. couldn't catch them. Finally caught uh, Garnett and tell Bubba what Garnett did on the four wheeler. Now Garnett was the one who told me he was. Well, he could get fire. it out. He he could he hey don't worry about me Rick I know how to ride a four wheeler. Right. Yeah, he couldn't get out of first gear. And he kept he kept popping wheelies. Oh yeah, he's popping wheelers and about you know slung himself over the handlebars. <laughs> right, and and did wet himself. And, and then wet himself. And then, <laughs> but but the sad part after was, I fired the second shot. Right. The, but the, it, yeah, when seeing one him go when through one there with his. With his back bubba, like bubba. this. How was he doing his back? He had his back like that when I shot. But, you know, he was just expecting that bullet to hit him, I guess. But then but, the sad part then was that Scott Dawson, who didn't know anything about four-wheelers, became a world champion and got away before we could wave him down and called 911. But, Rick, he went through the woods on a four-wheeler where there was not a trail. I, to this day, you know no, you I, know, I what, you know, know what Alabama oh, looks yeah. like in these pine yeah. thickets. Well, how far off? How far apart of the yeah, trees? Sometimes you can't even see through. <laughs> and it did, I don't know how he got through there. It did cut his leg up a little bit. Oh, yeah, a little bit. And, and, it wasn't that bad. And then he called 911 and said, which you, we, this is not good. Don't do this. And I mean, you can't help it if you think it's real. I mean, that, that we have an active shooter, and we have one man down, possibly two, and and it's now, he is now pursuing me. So this is where the prank got it went, out of hand. Got out of hand. So you see what is this well, one? But, but, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting it to go that far, but, you know, I I didn't, uh, you know, it didn't hurt my feelings. Right. And we had to bring the people on the show and talk about 911. We learned a lot. Oh, yeah. 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 We had to do a lot of work to fix I that. Tried to not to, I try not to do it, you know, to that level anymore, but 
you know, it was a yeah. good prank. Though. Garnett, it, it'd be hard to outdo that. One. Garnett said he learned that he can be afraid enough to lose his faculties, right, and control right. of his bodily functions. All right. Um, I found out that you know, find out if Gary's got live rounds, and Scott Dawson found out that if you call nine one one, know where you are. Yes. Okay. Because yeah. oh, yeah. they will come. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. And then you didn't find it. You didn't learn anything, did you? No. Uh, I think uh, we may have to have Gary back for. Yeah. Uh, round two at some point well listen i i was just wondering you know why am i why was i picked to be the first podcast of the you know 2020 well we've i don't know list. where I we've run know. the list we're down to you now so i don't know where i was you know the worst starting off with the worst or starting <laughs> off with the best gary i'm going to tell you the truth because we always do Bubba and I knew we were going to be gone for two weeks, and yeah. we were forget that we needed a podcast guest when we came back on that Monday. And I was the only one here. Which we did. We knew it would be fun to sit down with you. We wouldn't have to think too much. Yeah, we knew you'd be a sure thing, know, and we could book I you know. early. Well, Gary, thanks for being with us. and uh, We do like you, Gary. We love, we you. love you, bro. The audience loves you. Uh, <laughs> my family, and I know Bubba's family, too, for the time mm-hmm. that you work with him, are so thankful that you are a friend of ours and uh, appreciate what you do and how you – Take care of my family and uh, be forever grateful. We've had some great memories that we've been able to create because of your hard work and uh, and how you've taken care of us. So I appreciate that very much. And come back and see us again. Well, I just enjoy being around both of y'all. You know, I I think a lot of both of you. I know Rick's your favorite. It's okay. Uh, Well, no. But I paid quicker. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Bubba, I mean, really, honestly. Well, you know, I had to call him last week about my check. Oh, no, Rick, you're not a pro. No, last month. When was it? Last month. What happened? Tell Bubba what happened. Oh, uh, it somebody tore it in part. Tore it apart in the mail, and they sent know, it to him in nah, like a uh, whatever. Which I didn't say nothing about it till you mentioned it. Till now, yeah. uh, Gary. Thanks for being with us. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it. Great, uh, and, but and uh, and I know that as Bubba said, the audience probably will demand that you'll return for us to pick up right here and find out more. Oh yeah, yeah, I enjoyed it. I was and, a little bit nervous to start with, but you're okay. And we want to remind everybody if they enjoy these podcasts, like them, thumbs up. And let other people know about it. Oh, you probably won't get nobody but family members watching this one. No, well, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll test this out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you have uh, an audience. I don't know what that says about them, but you do. And uh, we'll continue to pursue the question today, which I'm with Bubba. I don't think we completely answered who is Gary Vine. I'll tell you next time. Thanks for being with us on this edition of Rick and Bubba University.